Anarchy, activism, attempted assassination. Emma Goldman, named the most dangerous woman in America by the FBI, left behind a complicated legacy. But who was this young radical? Born in Lithuania in 1869, Goldman moved to Russia when she was 12, and at 16, she found work in a factory. There, she experienced the harsh conditions of the labor industry, which fueled her interest in the theory of anarchy. The idea that people are inherently good and that capitalistic governments prevent true equality. In 1885, Goldman moved again, this time to the United States, where she learned about injustices in the U.S. labor system, including long hours, unequal pay, and suppression of rights, firsthand. Motivated by the growing sense of inequality in New York and other cities around the country, Goldman joined her fellow anarchists in taking action. She began to deliver inflammatory speeches, calling for a full-blown revolution, and claiming that violence was necessary in order to force change. Dubbed Red Emma by fellow extremists, she became a target for federal investigation. Henry Clay Frick, an industrialist famous for his harsh business practices, ordered violent strikebreakers to stop a worker's protest, causing several deaths. Goldman and her partner, Alexander Berkman, were outraged and began plotting his assassination. On July 23, 1892, Berkman entered Frick's office and violently attacked him, but Frick survived. Berkman was sentenced to 22 years in prison, but Goldman avoided jail due to a lack of evidence against her. Meanwhile, Goldman further immersed herself in extremist causes, even publishing a magazine that the U.S. government would later ban. It encouraged taboo topics, such as women's rights, took aim at the suffrage movement, claiming that voting rights wasn't the problem, the entire system was, and opposed the concept of marriage. Often referred to as the mother of non-monogamy, Goldman had relationships with men and women, which likely influenced her vocal advocacy for sexual freedom. When she began encouraging Americans to dodge the draft during World War I, Goldman was deported to Russia, but continued her activism through writing, speaking, and fundraising for causes in Europe. She died of a stroke at 70, but left behind a legacy of anarchism and activism that continues to inspire change today. How has the perception of radicalism across the political spectrum changed in America over time? 